that will give us strong encouragement to lay firm hold on this hope that he has set before us. And best of all, friends, believe me, when it is all over, we will love Jehovah our God more than we ever did before. Yes, we will leave this hall today with a far greater appreciation for the loving way Jehovah is using his son to save us. However, we must be awake to the fact that very soon, the greatest tribulation since the world's beginning will come in upon all those dwelling upon the face of all the earth. This is going to be a terrible time for mankind. Our godly fear, including your speaker, will be increased beyond measure. We are going to be frightened, friends, during this time. However, when Armageddon is over, we are going to face a rather gruesome, not a rather, a very gruesome situation. Let's turn to Jeremiah 25 and see what he tells us about it through this prophet. Jeremiah 25, 33. And those slain by Jehovah will certainly come to be in that day from one end of the earth clear to the other end of the earth. They will not be bewailed, neither will they be gathered up or be buried. As manure on the surface of the ground, they will become. Now, try to picture this, friends, this gruesome picture. Dead bodies and body parts of the wicked will lie strewn on the surface of the ground, in streets, alleyways, fields, and buildings. Now notice that God in this verse tells us here that no one will mourn or bury these dead ones. Now what does this tell us? It shows us that we will not be traumatized by his mass annihilation of these individuals. No, his divine execution of the wicked will not haunt us for the rest of our lives. Rather, we will react to it today as we do when a vicious serial murderer is executed. How do you feel about him when he gets it? Why, we will feel an inner satisfaction. Our indignation has been appeased. Yes, a sense of triumph that at last Jehovah's justice has been served. AIDS has been stopped. The gays are gone. The homosexuals, the lesbians. The murderers, the drug lords, all gone. Now, you're going to feel sorry for these people? No. And those that don't mind them living around, you're going to feel sorry for individuals? No. Now, how will Jehovah dispose of all these bodies of those slain by him? Ezekiel 39 and Revelation 19, you can look this up when you get home. We haven't got the time. Tells us that he will beckon his wild beasts and birds to come and devour their fleshy parts. However, the vast number of cadavers will be much more than they can consume. Therefore, Jehovah will doubtless use some highly scientific means at his disposal, perhaps antimatter, to disintegrate their putrefying organisms. Now, especially in cities where we live, there is going to be a high concentration of dead ones. We're going to have to need them because those animals in the Bronx Zoo, they got out, they're still going to need all the bodies in the Bronx. No, no but Jehovah demonstrates his practical wisdom by doing this. He prevents disease from spreading to us from their putrefying flesh of all these dead ones. He rids their earth of their foul smell. And believe me, friends, we need to get that cleared up. And he will keep our air and water free from pollution. So he knows what he's doing. He's running the show. He'll take care of it. Thus, wherever we are, our God will thoroughly, according to Ezekiel 39, cleanse the land. And remember, many of us are going to lose our homes and everything in them. As mobs of maddened men attack and one another, they will devastate city blocks and the countryside, you see. This will provide, the providing of shelter will be needed then to prepare to be care for these individuals. And this is again the reason we want to stress you might want to take this as pre armageddon instructions. We will, why we should, we will not be allowed to go into buildings to take what we want, nor to move into such. Some may be on the verge of collapse. That spiritual paradise will be there, helping us to attain to perfection and gain the right to eternal life in Jehovah's earthly paradise. How thankful we should be that Jehovah had the foresight way back in 1919 to set up that spiritual paradise. Jehovah also may unite us 
geographically. Now, how will this happen? Geographically, I never heard this before. This is a new one on me. <laughs> Jehovah God can direct the cataclysmic forces at Armageddon to rejoin. Now notice my word, I'm not saying join. To rejoin all the land masses as they once were before the flood. And scientists tell us that is the study of Pangea, which is that one time the earth was one complete com connected landmass. It was in the Awake magazine, too. If you want to look that up, you got your new CD-ROMs, brothers, just press the button, and you'll find it there. Connecting the Americas to Asia through the Aleutian chain, linking Europe through Britain to Canada, Australia with Asia via the Indonesian archipelago, and raising land...